uh, Paul and Pete here, and today we're going to talk about America's Great Loop a little bit. We haven't talked about the loop in a long time, have we, Chief? No. Another reason I want to talk, I got Pete with me today. You guys don't see Pete so much anymore, and the reason is because we both have jobs. I work nights, he works, works days, days. <laughs> and, but now we have uh, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, or, yeah, Tuesdays and Wednesdays off together. Yeah. So we see each other a little bit more now, but a lot of times I take the No Regrets channel and I'm out uh, on a delivery, like next week I have a delivery. So even on my days off, I fly out of here, or actually I'm driving out next week. Well, I'll take the car and I'll run and I won't even see Pete then now for about two weeks. Yeah. But today we're going to go uh, have lunch in Miami and uh, visit a friend maybe and then look at a car or something like that. Yeah. So we, today we'll enjoy ourselves uh, and, and we do get to hang out once in a while. Um, so and today, so it works out that he's in the video with me today. And today we're going to talk about America's Great Loop. But, for, uh, uh, you know, we always talk about the market a little bit. Next week, uh, everybody's asking me, what's my crystal ball? What's going on with the, the boating market? And we're going to talk about that next week uh, and where my crystal ball is. And we'll see uh, as a couple of these deals uh, develop more and more and more. But what I am seeing is deeper and deeper discounts on all the boats, Chief, because Mark over in New York, uh, that he was in uh, negotiations on a Grand Banks. So they're asking 250 ish a range, somewhere around there. Uh, then I just found out today they took all the surveyors out there. The boat was immaculate. Everything was good. But the engines just had too many hours on it. It's like, you know, it's like it's, it's an older Grand Banks, with, but it had a lot of good stuff on it. But 4,000-hour cats, do you know what I'm saying? They're at the end of the life. It, it's just, yeah, it's with turbocharged uh, uh, cats at that. At that. You, you've got to, anyway, the owners agreed to discount the engines a little bit, so we'll get a little further along in that deal next week and see. Uh, and I do think I was told that something like they're going to pay for one of the motors is what they're going to do. So we'll see how that, that deal works out. But I am seeing the market uh, start to fall down a little bit, you know, that the prices are starting to come down in some of these boats. And they have to. It, it just, it's just ridiculous where the price has got on them and stuff like that. Because a boat is not an appreciating value. It's a depreciating asset that you have. And yeah. it's just that salt water just tears it up, don't it? Anyway, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard on them. Anyway, today I want to talk about America's Great Loop. Uh, the, uh, the loop, uh, in general, is probably one of the toughest things you'll ever do in your entire life. They... they they uh, equate it to, uh, you know, uh, if you Googled it, they say you got a better shot of climbing Mount Everest. And after doing it now, I've done it twice, actually. Pete hasn't completed the whole loop yet. He's still got a very small section of Florida a here. A little bit of section. Yeah, yeah it is, and it's not a lot uh, because Pete actually joined me on the loop with my wife. Um, and I'll explain that a little bit further in, in the loop. And uh, that's probably why I'm divorced today, huh, Chief? <laughs> It's rough, though. It was really, uh, uh, the way I explain the loop now is, uh, you know, it really is, there's a 90-day learning curve, let's say. Yeah. And that first month, you know, me and Bev had a plan, you know, and I love the, I always love that phrase, you know, Mike Tyson, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. Yeah, plus the startup is the hardest thing. Yeah, it is. It, like every day, every week, I call Pete, well, we're leaving, we're leaving. And he goes, Chief, all you got to do is get that boat out of the slip and go. And you, you just, I... You couldn't mentally and physically, it, it, was, a, it, took, it took a minute to do it. Uh, you know, is this ready? Is this ready? You know, I did a lot of preparation on my boat. I think having your boat completely 100% prep, uh, prepped and ready to go is a huge, huge factor in the loop and having a smooth loop. And I bought an older boat, uh, even back then, Loop Princess. You know, I think what I paid $35,000, $40,000 for it. Can't Dumped wait. another forty thousand dollars into it before I ever even left, and that was just parts, chief. Yeah, that's him doing all the work. Work, yeah. It sat on the hard for uh, two months or three months. Yeah, two, at least two. Yeah, two months, I believe, it was on the hard. I had to do a complete bottom job, engine, everything. By the time I was done with it, we had gone through everything. You had even flown out a few times and helped on a few of the projects. You did the air conditioner. Yep. The hard two top. Because you flew out how many times? Once twice. Or twice. Twice. Yeah, because we did the air conditioners one time. Yeah. And then we did the hard the solar, yeah, yeah, and solar, and then the hard two top. Oh up. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, oh yeah, the hard, the hard top two is top, separate. and yeah. then the solar, yeah. and so that we got all those projects done. And then me and Bev, Bev left on the loop, and I think the hardest part for me is Bev was a very organized uh, person. Like, no, I don't. What I mean by that is like she would want to know where we're stopping every single night, yeah. and she'd want to have it all scheduled out. Because, you know, it was important for her that the dog has a place to go to the bathroom. And I get it. You know, I really do. But <laughs> that literally, Chief, that lasted about two weeks. 
Yeah. We tried to make this schedule, but and everybody asks, well, what? Why can't you just schedule? Why can't? Why? 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 Well, a you never know what exactly which port you're going to start at. Weather, weather, weather. Yeah, weather, <laughs> current, tide, boat breakdown. We never had any boat breakdowns because I think we were prepped really, really well. Yeah. But all of it is a factor, and yeah. it affects where you're going to stop that night. And it just never seemed like you know, or or we would do like we planned on stopping at Blow Blows Marina. You know what I'm saying? But. Hey, I'd rather go this one I'm, ten miles further, yeah. or this one ten miles closer. closer. I don't want to stop at Blow Blows. I want to stop at uh, yeah. Hip Hips. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it just never. It didn't work well, uh, and it was a pretty. Uh, and you know, we did it. You know, where we would schedule, and and and, and it just got so. It was just. It just made the trip even that much more difficult. As far as getting fuel, food, we had all that prep. That was all absolutely, and I would say just absolutely perfect. The boat was yeah. perfect. We had no fuel issues, no no issues with the boat at all. But that was the biggest issue, and it was stressful because she would get up and she was worried about where we we're going to stop and where we we're going to eat tonight and what we we're going to do for you know just everything was just an issue and. It took about a month to to completely get rid of that. And by now, you're not with us on the loop. Uh, It's just me and Bev on the loop because we left Mobile, Alabama, and then we uh, came in. And the reason I started America's Great Loop is, A, I'd lost my job to COVID. I wanted to, uh, and I found this loop uh, as a, some type of a, um, just an adventure in life, you know, just something. And a goal, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and it was, it was a goal. Um, and I remember sitting there one time and I'm just saying to myself, after I got involved in the loop, does that make sense? Like I, I didn't really understand what was going on and I didn't understand it, but then it became a challenge for me. And then it became one of those things where I said to myself one night, I said, and this is what it really, really takes to do the loop. I said to myself, I, I have to jump in the water, put the uh, boat rope in my mouth and, and drag this boat across the finish line. I'm going to go do the loop. And I think it took that mentality to do the loop. Does that make sense? And I think yeah. a lot of people don't have that mentality because you get out there that first month, it doesn't go to plan. You've been punched in the face. Mike Tyson had that famous saying, you know, everybody has a plan to get punched in the face. Yeah. Well, you that first month just punches you in the face. And a lot of people never make it through that first month. Yeah. And the, and the other thing, too, is the amount of miles that is 6,600 miles is so overwhelming, especially after you're like three or four days in or even a week in. Yeah, you're you've like, got 150 miles. I, <laughs> I, I didn't even, I haven't even, I haven't even, but I will tell you this, when you put your head down and after 90 days, you see how far you've gotten. And you look back and you, you say, look back and you're like, holy cow, I can't believe that we that I, made that much, but on just looking at it on a day to day, that's where you, the mind. Yeah, it just starts really mind messing with you. Yeah, and you're like with this. <laughs> so the first month is absolutely brutal. It yeah. is absolutely probably the most brutal thing you'll ever do in your life. Yeah, because you have to make adjustments on the boat and everything. Too. Everything has to be like you didn't. Anything you planned for, everything you did, everything you. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of good preparation, a lot of good stuff, but in the end, you really didn't know what you were doing, and you know the best plan f- f- uh, plans fail you know what i'm yeah. saying and it's, you know plus things change yeah exactly everything changes so then you have to live and adapt to that which we did me and bev made it that first month uh then i would say the next month that month it it, it now it became we're doing this does yeah. that make sense yeah and uh, now let's adapt uh, let's learn from our lessons from that first month. Yeah. And so now we're just, we get up in the morning, we have plan A, B, and C. If we make it to this marina, we do call marinas. We do, you know, say, hey, we're coming in. Uh, and then we try and make these goals. But if we don't, uh, we fall back on, you know, plan C C or B, you know what I'm saying? And, and weather, everything. And then you're nervous because you don't know weather. You don't know this. You're still very, very nervous but it starts to get the, a little easier as far as the trip goes. Yeah. And you really start to start enjoying the loop a little bit. And then you're having the cocktails with the people, uh, you're eating dinner out, you're, uh, you know, I'm loosening it up. I got a little joke because you, I think you joined us the second month, right? I yeah. Think so. Yeah, it was about the second, or maybe six or eight weeks in. Yeah. It was about the second, after the second month. And the him and Pete, uh, Pete and Bev would just give me the hardest time because for me it was money. You know what I'm saying? Like I, these guys would do. Well, 
Do you think we can stop at the marina tonight and plug the AC in? Or, or can we go to dinner or something? You guys would just give me the hardest time about my, or we'd go a mile or two out of the way. And it was like, uh, you know, that's going to cost us money and fuel. And I, I was just all shook up. Once you guys got to me though, and let me, and I quit worrying about the money. I said, I'm going to do this once in my life. You know I mean? I do need to enjoy it. <laughs> I did. Right. Chief. I lightened up a lot. Anyway, yeah. and then we got to, and then Pete, you pitched in. You would say, hey, I'll pay for this night. Right yeah, now. yeah, we kind of switched it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah uh, and uh, stuff like that, so that we all started to enjoy it a little bit. Yeah, and I, I think th my budget was like 10000 but your budget was a lot more than that, but still, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, you had a budget, and um, and then I had a, my budget, and we used your money for like going out to, and stuff that we wouldn't have normally done. Yeah. Um, and some of the marinas. But I paid for some of the marinas, too. Yeah, yeah. you did. Um, and uh, the groceries and stuff like that. So, But it, we really started to click as a team, the three of us, especially when we made the transaction, because you guys got to remember, when we did the loop, we're in Loop Princess, which is a totally prepped out boat, ready to do America's yeah. Great Loop. Yeah. Then we have to jump into a 50-foot boat, and that's when we really needed Pete's help a little bit, because now... I, a 35 foot boat going from a 35 foot boat to a 50 foot boat was huge and the learning curve on that was huge but we already kind of knew and knew what we were doing and stuff like that so we got the boat we said literally put a week's worth of prep in this boat but you had spent a month on yeah. the hard yeah. with it like doing the bottom job doing new batteries doing all the stuff that you know endless that, endless endless work work you're right and, and I could not have done this without my twin brother Pete there is absolutely no way and, and at the point in his life when he had time to go do it, because this boat needed a month worth of prep and it still wasn't ready. And no. then it took another week of both of us just grinding on this thing Four, for another 10 hour, 12 hour days. days and that, Cause it needed a toilet system right away. Yeah. We had spent a thousand dollars on the toilet. And then the, the it work I did to the engines, which is just replacing all the coolers and stuff like that, getting yeah. them up to date and oil changes and all that stuff. Making and then sure. take up, I, I took, I probably filled three dumpsters of trash, trash. Up. and then when I got there to those guys, they filled up another dumpster. Oh, I was every marina we stopped at for the first month was yeah. we'd fill them up with uh, yeah. trash. The People guy just brings stuff a on. Yeah. Well, it's just you know the boat they've had it for a long time. time. They lived on it during, but you just keep bringing stuff. It's like it, moving out of your apartment. <laughs> it's just, anyway, uh, so but I we wanted this bigger boat because we wanted to live on it when when we were done with the loop. So it was worth the transition. Uh, and then by the time you caught up with us, uh, so that was in um, uh, Delaware City Marina. Yeah, Delaware City Marina. And you had to bring the boat 500 miles to me. But then we started having a good time. We went through New York, so you did all of the area, yeah, all of the Great Lakes. Uh, you done the whole river system. I think you got off in Florence, and then me and Bev finished it. But it took that time to learn this boat. Uh, which I'm pretty proficient with. We both are, though. We both handle this boat, yeah. no problem at and all. And then I came, came, me and Paul came back up through, so I've done all that. I've only had one little stretch there of, for, for me to say that I completely, and but it's not a big deal to me. I don't care. But yeah, I've done 90% uh, of the loop. And I've done it twice now. I, I think I need one more little section to claim my, to get my uh, next Burgie is, and I think it's just a little uh, spitch from, from uh, Lake Erie, the middle of uh, Lake Erie, uh, through Huron, and then a piece of Michigan, and then I'm done. I've got my third, mm. uh, third one. But today, you know, it's just the determination of what it took to get to the loop. Is you got to have that mindset of put your head down and say, "I'm doing this." Yeah. And then, like I said, that first month is absolutely a killer. Most people don't make it through it. Yeah. I think that next month, uh, they people start to learn. And then by the th by the third month, uh, we're starting to treat it as a vacation uh, yeah. because now we know the boat. We know how to handle the boat. We know all the systems on the boat. We know how to deal with the marinas. We know how to deal with everything. And every single night when you're doing America's Great Loop, you're in a different marina, a different atmosphere. Uh, the one uh, bad thing about trying to take a 50-foot boat on it is sometimes we would go to places and you couldn't even get in a marina. You can't get in a marina. Yeah, because there was no, uh, there's no... Um, facilities. There's no fa facilities available uh, because of the... Um, size. Yeah, the size of the boat. Uh, so, uh, you know, I my per I think the perfect boat is about a 40-footer. That's that's just, you yeah. know, if, you're, if you want to... Do the uh, loop on a neck of, uh, on a budget type thing, and, and you know, two uh, forty footer with twin Lehmans is about the cheapest way you can do the loop. Yeah. 
um, or the single, a lot of people do it in the 36 gram bags with that single Ford Lehman. It's about the cheapest way you can do it. But I had twin, I had twin Ford Lehmans in both boats. Uh, and uh, you know, for us, it was, uh, it was economical. I mean, everybody complained, you know, when you have twins, you get about two miles a gallon. When you have a single, you get about three miles a gallon. And, and you know, it's a little bit more than that, but yeah. You know, fuel was everybody. Oh, how much did the fuel cost? But it was not the biggest expensive at, at all. It was it, it was minimal uh, when you look at the big picture. Yeah. But I really do think it's it takes. Uh, you know, you gotta really you gotta in your heart, you've gotta have that determination uh, that you're gonna do this thing. Uh, you're gonna commit to this thing. You're gonna do it and get it done. Uh, if you don't have that kind of commitment, you're yeah. probably not going to do it. And a lot of, it doesn't matter. It's, yeah. it's all about the adventure. It's all about the, uh, yeah. stuff. I'm glad I did it. I, now I have uh, my hundred ton captain's license. Um, I know the routes around there. I know the marinas. I know the people, I know phone numbers. I know, you know what I'm saying? Whatever yeah. I need to do on a delivery or if I need to help somebody, I can call them. I say, if you got a slip or something like that, I'm able to do that, but I would not be able to do that without that experience and stuff like that. So for me, it wasn't even about completely 100% about doing the loop. It was about the next career in my life, my next career the experience. decision. Yeah, the experience of, of, of the boating, the challenges of the boating, learning, uh, you know, the, the, a lot of people won't do the, the loop, you know, the nine foot uh, tide changes uh, get you over in the Carolinas, you know, that Georgia, uh, uh, South Carolina. That you know when that that scares the shit out of some people. It just yeah. does. It, yeah. And then uh, and then some people get scared of the river system. You know, there's snake. I never saw one snake on the entire river I didn't system. See a snake, yeah. Saw a couple of alligators. Yeah. And dude, we saw, but we saw everything. We saw a bear. We saw a bear crossing the, the one of the rivers. We saw the eagle. Remember the day that the eagle came down and I uh, grabbed the fish right out of the water right yeah. in front of us. Yeah. It was just amazing. The whole the whole experience for me was amazing. Yeah. I remember sitting up on that bridge, uh, even after Pete left uh, in Florence there, and it's just me and Bev going down the river. I just remember looking and saying, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. And by then, I'm really close. You know, I'm within a couple, three or 400 miles, and yeah. I'm like, I almost have tears in my eyes every single day when I get up, because this is it. I know I'm going to do this thing. And it was a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And, you know, I'm glad I did it. And it was very, very emotional. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I think Bev, even if she looks back in her life, uh, you know, I've taken her on some stuff that, you know, most women wouldn't do. But I think that uh, she, in the end, she respects it. And she's glad she did it. You know what I'm saying? She, she got a chance to do something that most people don't get to do. Yeah. And it makes her a better person, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I think in that way, it's good. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys this week. Uh, you know, we haven't talked about the loop in a long time. Uh, if there's any way I can help any of you, uh, just let me know. I'm happy to do it. Uh, anybody in the market looking for a boat, uh, let me know. I can broker anything outside of Florida. Inside Florida, though, we, uh, we could do uh, uh, the consulting. I do a lot of consulting, one-on-one -on -one consulting, for people looking at boats and stuff like that. Um, and just having that shoulder to talk to somebody. So, cause everybody gets emotional and they want to just buy the boat. You know what I'm saying? And, and you get emotionally attached to this thing, but that's not always the best thing uh, when you're, especially when you're buying one of these boats, especially one of these older boats, cause they, they need a lot of love and a lot of attention. Anyway, peace out. Thank you guys so much for watching. We, we truly appreciate it. Glad to see Pete in the video, a couple of these videos, uh, get him in there whenever I can. And uh, next week I got a delivery chief, so maybe I'll uh, do the uh, uh, video. If it, It's got to get through its survey and there's got to be a few more things. But next Monday I should be on a boat. Maybe I'll try and do the video on that boat, on that delivery type thing. Nice. So a little change up on, on what we do. I think we got a Sea Ray, I believe, a 40-foot Sea Ray. We're going to take it, I don't know, it's not even that far, a couple hundred miles. Anyway, peace out. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it so much. Make Thanks, sure you guys. leave that comment. Anybody wants to hit that super yeah. thanks, do it. And we just appreciate all the support. Anyway, bye. Bye.